Cheers, Dan. Great atmosphere here at the Riverside. Despite recent disappointments for Middlesbrough, they still do have faint hopes of automatic promotion, but they simply have to win out from here on in and hope the results elsewhere will go their way. For Norwich, well, they seem to have been on the outside for the whole season long, but a win tonight or a point would see them go into the top six, and we know that David Wagner has been there, seen it and done it before with Huddersfield Town. Borough all in red tonight, the traditional yellow and green of the Canaries. One change for Middlesbrough then as Cameron Archer comes in, Matt Crooks drops to the bench. It's Stefan in goal, Smith, McNair, Lenehan and Giles at the back. Acne and House and Holding with Falls and Ramsey either side of 26 league goal tuber Akpom. Archer starts up top. Archer who had a spell of course with the uh, opponents tonight. Norwich arrive here, lost one in their last eight. Gunn in goal, Aaron, Tom, Obama, Davis, Sorensen and McCallum at the bag. It's Sarah and Gibbs holding with Marquinhos, Sargent and Hernandez. Right, Puku hasn't scored in his last 13 on the bench for Borough. Roberts, Jones, Mark, Marlasa, Dykesdale, Crooks and Bowler. And for Norwich, it's McGovern, Byron, Hayden, Ida, Nunez, Rowe and Janoulis. Both sides going strong tonight, Neil Redford. Now's the time you've got to put up or shut up. Five games remaining. It's all to play for. Premier League dreams still well and truly alive. Yeah, well, this is the time that you've got to come alive. This point of the season, you know, both sides have will feel well definitely Borough will feel they've, they've been an, on a really good run you know they've, they've found new form Norwich with, with new boss David Wagner they'll be looking to try and get into that playoff position but um, th these are the games that really really matter they are indeed two teams out we're about to get underway here it's a filthy old night you're in the best place listening at home via the app or on the DAB or online however you join us tonight welcome along and we do, well, we do eventually get underway. Timu Puki will just lay the ball back. And interestingly, already, as Puki did that, there were puddles around his feet when he went to make his way downfield. The ball is passed back to the goalkeeper. Norwich goalkeeper, all in black, just slams it up towards the halfway line. And look, the rain is going to become an issue, I think, tonight, Neil, isn't it? The pitch is struggling to take this amount of, uh, of this volume of rain. Yeah, it is. I mean, I just look at both goalkeepers. What a problem this is going to be for them. Anything struck on target that struck well, and struck low and will skid off this surface and, and change direction and pick up speed absolute nightmare for goalkeepers if you're the manager of both sides you'll be saying anywhere around the box get popping away yeah well that's what you said to me as soon as I saw you tonight tonight's the kind of night you have a shot from anywhere who knows what will happen but the water's splashing up but Norwich got it down they're trying to pass it away beautiful bit of skill there from Sarah gets it and he now tries to lay it in here there's a chance edge of the area for the shot it hits uh, heels there and it's cleared away and the immediate danger has gone it was Marquinhos who had the effort from the edge of the box well that was neat play there from Norwich and now they have it they are tough to beat on their travels the Canaries and they've come in they've started really confidently they're dominating possession early on yeah really bright really comfortable in possession got a good shape to them you know the, the back four is able to go back and they're, they're recycling it across to keep in possession there's good pocket pockets of space appearing in that Middlesbrough midfield for yellow shirts to drop into it's going to be a tough night for Borough yeah, Hernandez a former Borough loanee is brought down on the halfway line and that will be a free kick for Norwich City. Just their side of the halfway line, David Wagner looks on. Got his uh, club jacket on and his baseball cap, as he generally does. Michael Carrick just stood there with a jacket, jeans and trainers on. Looking on, how will his side respond to recent disappointments? Ball is all the way back to Angus Gunn, the Scotland international, following the footsteps of his father as Akpom did well to charge down the attempted clearance from Sorensen. It's out for a throw. But yet, really, Neil, to have a kick. Yeah, they are, but I mean, I'll just look at Akpom there closing down, and it, look, it looks like a player playing with confidence. You know, he's really gone into that challenge there and got a good block on it, stopped the fullback playing forward. We're going to rely on him tonight because his goal tally is unbelievable. Yeah, 26 league goals for Chuba Akpom, added another one for in the cup for good measure as well. It's been a very profitable season for him, but at the moment his side can't get near the football. Puki turns it round the corner, and they've beaten the offside trap here, and they're racing with Aarons down the right-hand side. Tries to pull it in, Puki, back to goal, gets a good touch on it, can he get the shot away? Works under his right foot, shot is blocked, eventually cleared, partially cleared, and then Lenahan eventually will clear after the initial clearance, ricocheted off a Norwich player, but Puki there just couldn't 
couldn't get the ball out of his feet and now Borough will look to break going the other way but the ball forward there was too deep and Gunn will come out and collect it and maybe that's the team of Pukki who hasn't scored in 13 goals Neil there was a time gone by that would have been a guaranteed goal yeah there was a lot of touches there that didn't help him um, you've got to give credit as well to Paddy McNair who stood up made himself big and made himself difficult to play past but it's a real opportunity for Pukki you've seen the net bulging with Pukki in them positions in the past yeah the ball being played out from the back by Norwich who work it down this near side have it on this near touchline side but the uh, ball given away by McCallum initially it's played forward Pukki beaten in the air the ball didn't bounce too much there and Norwich have nicked it back with Hernandez Hackney tried to bring him down Hernandez tries to feed it wide and the ball cut out and given away again though by Middlesbrough who just can't get hold of it at the moment here come Norwich now plenty of yellow shirts flooding forward down the right hand side cutting in now lays it back to Sargent Sargent lays the ball back off 25 yards out on Al Hernandez has it right on the left hand side little step over doesn't get him past his man lays it back now possible shot coming in great block from Fors did really well there well uh, Sam McCallum hasn't scored for Norwich he tried to pull the trigger there but the block was a good one but once again Middlesbrough can't get out of their own half Hernandez has it near side look like he showed too much of that and it's gone out for a throw and finally Borough will get the ball back and uh, I think Hayden Hackney's just been spoken to by the official Josh Smith the man in the middle it's one of those nights Neil isn't it where players are going to be tempted to slide in and maybe make challenges that they shouldn't be making yeah and I, and I think the referee's got to take that into consideration so long as there's no malice in it um, you know I think he's got to be he's got to be quite lenient but um, just going back to Norwich they've, they've really started on the front foot the tempo's high they're getting bodies forward we talked about that whichever fullbacks could join in early and then at this point in time it's Max Aarons and McCallum that are getting forward for Norwich yeah ball almost found its way through to Cameron Archer but he couldn't control it and Angus Gunn has it into his uh, six-yard box, lays it out on the far side in front of that small pocket of Norwich fans who've made the way up here. Credit to them, it'll certainly be a day off work and a late night tonight as they'll make their way back to East Anglia. Will they have three points with them? Well, they're attacking down the right-hand side. They're putting a good early ball. McNair again as well to stop it getting to Pukki. And the ball cleared away by Burrows have it over on the far side with Aaron Ramsey it was Ramsey of course who was on loan at Norwich earlier in the season scored a few goals as well for the Canaries ball on halfway well eventually out for a throw and over on the far side and Middlesbrough what nearly six minutes in Neil just starting finally to get a few touches well yeah they are but they, 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 they don't look the fluent Middlesbrough that we've known from the past and they've given it away here now there's a chance to drive forward Sergeant will lay the ball off here it's chipped over the top for Pukki could have hit on the volley lays it back to Sargent who's pulled it wide from eight yards out that was a glorious chance everyone expected Pukki to shoot and he laid it back beautifully and there was Sargent who pulled his shot wide big chance well that was a sitter unbelievable play by Timo Pukki shaped as if he was going to shoot and as the ball dropped over his shoulder just chopped it back into Sargent's path and he's aiming for that far corner and he just gets it out of, out of um, the the, the width of the goal and it goes wide of the far post but if that had finished in the back of the net it would have probably been what uh, Norwich would deserve at the start to play Mark yeah they've had a good good start here McNair will bring the ball out from the back got the ball off Zach Stefan who's all in grey tonight which is the weather nice little turn though for Akpom here Fors has played in Akpom lays it in now chance for the shot from closing of course goal must be a goal and it's tapped in at the far post Aaron Ramsey it is who goes across to celebrate he couldn't miss from two yards out but he might not have had much of the ball in his opening stages but they have the lead it's Middlesbrough 1 Norwich nil. yeah fantastic ball it's a, it's a great slide ball through by Tommy Smith to put balls through and it gets to the bar line and chops it back and it goes right across the face of the goal and Aaron Ramsey's coming in the far post and just side foots into an empty net the irony of this is that it's been all Norwich City in these only exchanges but the ball's in the back of Norwich's net 1-0 Borough nice play as well unselfish play there from Cameron Archer from a narrow angle he pulls it across goal 
and it all came about you have to give credit to Marcus Force with a layoff he had no right to not only win the ball but he put it into the path of Akpom and they came racing forward and it is a goal and it is Aaron Ramsey who scores the goal he started the season at Norwich he's ended it with Middlesbrough he might yet be ending it as a Premier League player with Middlesbrough while he's on loan here from Aston Villa yeah great start for Bruno I mean you didn't see that coming from the opening exchanges Norwich have started really well but that goal will have really rocked them back it will indeed and the ball now laid back to Angus Gunn who has had nothing to do other than pick the ball out of the back of his net what a start for Middlesbrough up against it could easily have been behind but they score the goal on the break that gives them the lead they started the night in fourth a win would take them level with Luton on points with a go above Luton in the third on goal difference there's another ball forward is looking to try and get Archer in but it's cleared away from him no nonsense defending by Norwich who have found goals to be a problem in recent weeks no goals for Pukki or Sargent in recent months and they'll need two if they're going to pick up all three points at least here tonight yeah oh, I, I can't help but think back to them two blocks by Paddington there as well Mark, you know earlier on in the game the, the, the first one from Timu Pukki and then you know obviously the miss as well the far post by um, by Sargent you know and these are the fine margins in tight games like this with sides that are in the uh, top end of the table you, you've got to make them count you have Tommy Smith went flying into the tackle here now is Hackney he's going to put another cross in it's a great cross and it's cleared away at the near post by Norwich at the expense of a corner Burrow all of a sudden it's like someone switched them on they lead by a goal to nil yeah Sam McCallum's having a little bit of a problem at left back all the good players going down his side not getting much help from an, uh, an Alan Anders needs the wide player to double up and get back and help him out Zonal defending here for Norwich there are four yellow shirts across the edge of the six yard box as the corner from the Borough right is going to be whipped in left footed now a few red shirts going to join them the ball is delivered into that near post it's flicked on it's partially cleared away and eventually it's followed away by Marquinhos and out for a throw what did you make of the uh, Ramsey celebration he went right over to the Norwich fans didn't he celebrated in front of them yeah it's a little bit naughty to be fair it's the last thing they want to say when they're soaking and they just travel five hours but um, you know I mean the, the, the goal I mean, it's, it, it's conception and the way it got built and slid down the side of Norwich's defence absolutely brilliant from Middlesbrough work to be done for Norwich to get back into it but they would have been uh, taking great heart from the start until that goal went in 1-0 here on TalkSport 2 don't forget a double header tomorrow lunchtime game day live hits the TalkSport airways we're live on TalkSport exclusively live from Villa Park Aston Villa Newcastle in the Premier League and at 12.30 on TalkSport 2 Sheffield United take on Cardiff what a game that is at both ends of the table Sheffield United hunting down automatic promotion Cardiff looking to avoid the drop to League One it's all to play for following that all the goals as they're going with Adrian Durham on TalkSport and Spurs against Bournemouth exclusively live on tour sport two from three another big game with implications at either end of the table back pass to gun was not the best but got there eventually and now they'll work the ball forward and Liam Gibbs the youngster in midfield has it he will look to spread the ball it's an awful pass though he's given it straight to force he slipped when he played it force gets it away and it looked like a foul on Trevor Akpom it is a foul on Akpom 30 yards out from goal maybe 35 yards out very central here for Middlesbrough lead 1-0 yeah Akpom's had a great start you know his touches have been good his movement's clever you can understand why he's got his goals and Burrow tried to take it quickly eventually comes to nothing and Norwich get themselves a goal kick 12 going live on talks what to Mark Wilson with the former Leeds and Rotherham manager Neil Redfern and Neil might not have been great so far Middlesbrough but they're in front and that will please Michael Carrick yeah well and you know if you look at it in the cold light of day it's about both penalty boxes and from Norwich's great start Middlesbrough really defended their own penalty box really well getting bodies in the way and blocking and the importance of that led to the goal at the other end 
We've seen a few Norwich players slipping now. We've just seen Sorensen slip as he went to play the ball forward. We saw earlier on that Liam Gibbs slipped over when making his pass. The players have got to be careful, haven't they, tonight? They've got to keep it a little bit more simple than maybe they'd want to. Yeah, they have, and they've got to put the opposition under pressure as well. I mean, if you can make defenders play back to the goalkeeper, for strikers, you've got to do that extra little bit and chase things down because there's a chance it might stick in the water on the surface all inside the borough half they lead by a goal to nil a goal coming inside the opening seven minutes Aaron Ramsey on loan here from Aston Villa with a finish as Akpom pops up on the right hand side Housen just lets the ball run in front of him he gets it away to Lenahan who will move it wide and the, you can see the ball is not quite rolling freely at the moment it's still getting there but a little bit slower and the players maybe just got to give it a little bit more oomph than they would have normally expect to here now is Fools again who plays such an important part in that opening goal he's been in great form as well Marcus Fools uh, in recent weeks he's been banging in the goals as well for Villa uh, sorry for uh, Borough and as you said it's important isn't it that the players all over contribute if you're going to get promotion you've got to have contributions all across the team yeah for, for sure and you know your strikers have got to get the bulk of the goals you know you've, hopefully you've got to have a couple of strikers in double figures one midfield player that looks to, to, to get around that double figure mark which obviously Akpom has been unbelievable 26 goals he's more than matched it but um, there's a good balance to this Middlesbrough side I, li I like the way that they, they, they line up you know they, they, they look comfortable in possession they, they hunt the ball down well you know they, they, they work as units really well I think he's done a great job Michael Carrick yes here's Johnny Howson a veteran former Norwich player of course gets the ball out wide over on the left hand side for Middlesbrough they'll just ease the ball back now they're waiting for the reinforcements to arrive over on that far side Hackney will get the ball he gets it away Lenahan pops up he's got McNair with him in the center circle McNair then looks to get away from Pukki he plays it wide on the right hand side it's a bit of a keep ball session from Middlesbrough then they put the ball forward it's headed away and out for a throw in by uh, Jacob Sorensen and Borough will get a throw in high up the field approaching uh, 15 minutes gone here on Torchville 2 Middlesbrough on Norwich nil the ball into the feet of Akpom again who back to goal did a good job and again not for the first time tonight he's upended and it is a free kick to Middlesbrough yeah I think Michael Carey could be really pleased with how this game has gone after the initial start I mean they weathered the storm initially and um, made it difficult for, for, for Norwich to get in front of goal and get a clear sight of goal and then they took the goal so well themselves yeah another quickly taken free kick that led to nothing and now they've conceded a free kick themselves Middlesbrough on this near side as uh, McCallum is just pulled back as he looked to break forward can tell you in the Scottish Premiership Ross County nil Aberdeen one Lopez with a goal there for the Dons his gun will come across and take the free kick over on the Norwich City left he just throws it infield about 10 yards so open up the angle a little bit and now he'll knock it long right footed towards Sargent who gets the header on it Pookie just couldn't quite collect it House and fires it back to Stefan who controlled it beautifully on his chest and then side foots it forward Archer has gone down he wanted a free kick Good tackle there, mid-air challenge from Housen who came away with the ball and he played fours in but the whistle had gone. Right on halfway, the Borough fans around us not happy about that but Housen always willing to put his foot in and win the ball back for his side. It's another good challenge and right on cue, Housen goes in and wins the 50-50. Falls didn't quite have the same intent as he went up against Sorensen but that's lifted the crowd hasn't it? Yeah definitely, both sides are really up for this. You know, all good, hard, fair, strong ch challenges. You know, the referee, Mr. Smith, Josh Smith, happy with that to go, keep going. But um, we've got to be pleased with the way this has started, brother. I just look at the two midfield players, Aidan Acne, uh, Acne and um, Johnny House, and their role today is going to be really key because we've seen Norwich break really quickly, two or three times in this game already. So they need to protect that front section of, uh, of that back line for Borough. I'm not sure what David Wagner's uh, pre-match, another quickly taken free kick, comes to nothing, his gun came out to the edge of the area. I'm not sure what David Wagner said about Chuba Akpon, but every time he's touched the ball anywhere near the halfway line, he's been upended, hasn't he? Yeah, he has. I mean, they're obviously well aware of him. 26 goals, if, if you're not aware of him, then you should be, but... You know, he's a player that's playing right at the height of his powers at this moment in time. It's a phenomenal total. 
Yes, 26 in the league. Been some outrageous tallies in recent seasons in the championship. Mitrovic last year breaking the record as McCallum on the end of guns past does actually does really well on the left hand side then he plays it forward Sergeant gives the shoulder badge to McNair who was strong enough to ride the challenge and then it's thumped away over on the far side up towards halfway falls wins a header but it falls to Norwich who get it back on the halfway line and they will look to rebuild they've had uh, almost 18 minutes here they trail Norwich by a goal to nil Gunn's got it back again as Burr trying to chase high up the field. It's Archer doing the chasing but they bypass him and now they have it over on the far side. Ball played into the feet of Puki. Does well. Good sliding challenge comes in. Well that wins it straight back for Burr. And now the ball on the left hand side as they look to attack. Nice skill from Ramsey. Goes past one gets past two can he find a cross I'm not sure he thinks there's anyone in the box so he's going to try and win a corner and all that good work came to nothing and it goes behind for a goal kick but quite clearly he feels he's got a point to prove tonight against his former lone side yeah he's started really well Ramsey to be fair on that occasion Max Aarons is having none of it shepherds the ball out really well defends it well been a cracking game to start with to be honest with you both sides have made really good starts Norwich should be disappointed that they've conceded the goal but you know they've got to be buoyed by the way they're playing yeah they have indeed you're live on Talks World 2 Matt Wilson and they've handled over a thousand career appearances Neil Redfern and the ball long and downfield Pookie tries to win the header he's out jump ball laid off over on the far side and they ride the challenge and here they go again Ramsey breaking forward try to lay it off and the pass just a little bit too heavy but Norwich have got to clear it and eventually all they can do is put it behind for a corner there they got their feet in a bit of a tangle the ball broke uh, kindly and it was Omar Bamadeli who just had to put it behind the Norwich captain he had no other choice yeah I think the surface played a big part in that as well I think it didn't take any chances whatsoever maybe in hindsight it's a good good piece of defending because they tried to fiddle his way out of that and it stuck in the water they might have had a problem Norwich well again there are four Norwich shirts surrounding Archer in the six yard box then there are the likes of Hackney, Lenehan, McNair all waiting on the edge of the area Akpom waits on the penalty spot falls just in front of him as Johnny Howson goes across to deliver it will be a right footed in swinging corner here live on TalkSport 2 at the Riverside the ball going to be swung in towards the far post and Norwich in fairness defend it nicely there was no Borough player at the back post and it's all the way out for a goal kick but you have to say there's, uh, there's actually a Middlesbrough player has gone down here not sure what's happened here there's Aaron Ramsey yeah and the physio they won't want to lose him coming on he's holding his groin as well so Ramsey the goal scorer will need treatment here but you have to say set piece wise Middlesbrough have been a bit wasteful haven't they yeah they have I mean that one there I mean it, it, it was the, the wrong delivery for the movement that they were making I mean everything was front loaded as regard player wise they were all getting across the near post across the penalty spot the ball was floated right out the back stick with absolutely no Middlesbrough player in, in sight and a bit of a wasteful situation there's another pair of play gone down now but I think he's just changing his boot over on that far side you are listening to Middlesbrough against Norwich City in the AFL live on TalkSport 2 with Carling the UK's number one lager 18 plus please drink responsibly well Ramsey's getting treatment it looks like a lower leg it looks like his shin that, that's the problem the physio is feeling that part of his leg and obviously hope there's no issue here yeah. there's still a lot to play for as we've mentioned only too well Middlesbrough who came into it one winning five they've got Luton still to come in there end of season running Hull at home Luton away Rotherham away and Coventry at home and you'll hear a few of those uh, Borough games across the uh, TalkSport network including Hull on Wednesday night Middlesbrough against Hull Jim Prowfer will be here with Neil for that one 8 o'clock start and then at the weekend more championship football to come Monday the 24th Luton against Middlesbrough live and exclusive on TalkSport 2 so if you're a Borough fan you're in just the right spot really you'll hear all the running of your side on the TalkSport network if you've got the app you can download that or if you haven't got it you can download it it's right left and right between the two we're just looking at the puddles uh, forming around the pitch David Wagner stood out in the 
in the rain he's got his cap on and uh, I'm pleased to say at the moment Ramsey is up on his feet he's hobbling off over on the far side let's hope he's going to be okay to carry on still 1-0 Middlesbrough Lee yeah I think uh, in them 1v1 challenges I think Max Aaron's had a couple of little swipes at him and I think he's felt one of them to be fair to him but that's what you're going to get I mean if you've got it oh, he's struggling no, he's, he's just gone, gone down again he's gone Ramsey. down again and that might be him done yeah so the that physios come straight back on well he's trying to run it off hasn't he and as he's run onto the field he's literally broken down again he's got his hand across his face and he knows that his night is over the Borough subs are warming up it'll be interesting who they call upon here they've obviously got Matt Crooks they could introduce but I'm not too sure what they'll do at the moment I'm just getting a replay oh we've just seen a replay of it and you're right it, it was Aaron's who just had a clear swipe at his shin hasn't he yeah I'm just yeah. watching the replay again he's left a bit on him a couple of times now and I think that would really hurt but I mean he got away with it and ran with it but it's obviously it's obviously damaged something whether he's twisted his ankle or it doesn't look good no it doesn't he's helped to his feet and he's going to be shown off the field by the referee again but I guess the question is if he is coming off as a substitute now the question is for the physios now if he carries on and makes it worse yeah you know although there's only a few games left if it's only minor then they can get him well, fit for some Alex time. Moore a player you know all too well from your days at Leeds is stripped and ready to come on so they are going to have to make the change I just look at this and think if he's genuinely injured why are they making him walk all the way around the field why did he not just come on I know it would have taken a minute or so to get him off but sure that's going to be easier than him walking around the entire field he's getting a great ovation by the way and he's loving it well, over on the far side but he <laughs> won't be loving the fact that he's no. injured and that could potentially be a big problem for Middlesbrough going forward because he's been a great signing for them but it is Alex Moore who is uh, on into the action or he will be imminently he's uh, down there now he's ready to roll want to be next been expecting to get on just so early Alex Moore he's another lone player from West Bromwich Albion all played over the top they're trying to get McCallum in behind and he's got him behind but the flag's gone up he is offside it remains a goal to nil to Middlesbrough but problems with that change and it's always a problem when one of your key players gets injured Neil but when they get injured so early it just makes life a little bit more awkward yeah it does and you know he's been really sharp in these opening exchanges to be fair to him Ramsey scored the goal took um, Max Aaron's on two or three times and got past him I mean Alex Moore will come on and give a little bit of natural balance on that left hand side I think it looks like uh, Liam Gibbs is uh, sorry um, Tuba that point maybe he's going to play a little bit further forward or maybe even Marcus Fors but yeah, they know it's gone into that centre and midfield area with uh, Johnny Housen. Yeah, there's a free kick for the offside, so we're not quite getting a true reflection because all the Middlesbrough players are stood in a in a huddle in effect as they wait this free kick forward, which is over the top of Ak and out for a throw in. Yeah, he's heading that way that's gone over to the left. Yeah. More just sitting in the middle with Housen you can hear the ripple of applause around us and that says the uh, injured player Ramsey makes his way round and it is 1-0 Middlesbrough and that round of applause is getting ever louder as he reaches us here as Akpom Holmes nicked away the throw in ball now played over on the far side Norwich looking to skip forward now down there right hand side what can they produce here they're going to put the cross in towards the far post and Anders is doing well to keep it in but it falls to the feet of McNair who's only too happy to clear it away and that was a, a good effort from Onel Hernandez on this near side as he looked to get the ball in field did well to keep it in Norwich looking for a response and not as much of the ball since they went behind Sorensen fires the pass the rain has eased up a little bit but it's still coming down at a reasonable rate Norwich over on the far side will win themselves a free kick after there's a tug on the shirt over on that uh, Norwich right hand side it remains 1-0 I think when uh, Norwich get the ball into uh, wide areas Hernandez and Marquinhos then they've got real threat 
Well, it is now. McCallum trying to get him down the left-hand side. It's a lovely ball over the top. Can he deliver? Drives it across. Big chance. Sergeant cleared off the line. Keeper parried it. Stefan, the ball goes back into Pookie. Tries to lay off edge of the area and Borough clear it. Well, the ball came in. Stefan made the save and then the follow-up. And Sergeant has his effort cleared away. That was a big Norwich chance. Should have been a leveller. Yeah, anywhere else on the goal and that's in. I mean, he's that close in. Even if he goes for violence, that squirts off the surface and goes into the net. And they've missed a couple of really good chances now in these opening exchanges, Norwich. They ruin them at half time if it stays like this. Yeah, they will indeed. They've created opportunities, but you can see why they're lacking in goals in recent weeks. Good work though from the defence. Stefan, the American goalkeeper, denies the American striker in Sargent and remains 1 0 to Borough. Forward come Norwich again up towards halfway again they try to work in behind but well, Timu Puki had no chance of getting on the end of that one bouncing out for a throw in and they played some nice balls down the channels Norwich but that sadly wasn't one of them yeah and the combinations in wide areas have been really really good I think you know particularly down in Anders' side McCallum getting forward um, and also Aaron supporting McQuinnos but to be fair when it's got into the box and round the box Paddy McNair and Lenehan have been excellent. Yeah, welcome along to listeners on TalkSport. Join us on TalkSport 2 here live at the Riverside where Middlesbrough lead Norwich by a goal to nil. Aaron Ramsey with the goal for Middlesbrough. It came somewhat against the run of play. Cameron Archer worked his way into the area, pulled the ball back across goal and there was Ramsey that took it in. But sadly for Ramsey, he has since gone off injured with a lower leg injury. Looked uh, a nasty one as well. He was caught in a tackle by Max Aarons. But Norwich have had plenty of chances up the other end. Puki pulled the ball back Sargent should have done better pulled his shot wide from 8 yards out we've just seen him denied by the goalkeeper Neil Redford former uh, Leeds bosses alongside us the goal came against the run of play Neil and Norwich have certainly had chances and should at least be level yeah they have you're spot on I mean it's a good goal that Middlesbrough scored but you know Norwich could have been 2-0 up at least by that time and uh, they'll be going in at half time thinking that what could have been but they've got to keep doing what they're doing I mean they've got in front of that bit of goal on a few occasions now they have indeed so much at stake for both these two teams middles are of course still chasing automatic promotion as it stands a goal above Luke on goal difference in the third Norwich still on the outside looking in of the playoff mix if they get a point here tonight Norwich they would go into the top six so lots to play for this game is live and exclusive on national radio on TalkSport 2 with Neil and I we've had uh, 30 minutes it's Middlesbrough 1 Norwich 0 and the ball at the back with Norwich who will play it forward now they've been easy on the eye haven't they Norwich you know you come to expect that with Norwich they've got a style of play they get it down they pass it around and that continues they're just lacking that cutting edge at the moment and maybe as we said two strikers not quite at the top of their game as Hernandez did really well he was foul the referee blew the whistle Hernandez didn't realise he tried to play on he, his skill was so good there in the close quarters all over on the far side Norwich have it again Borough forced into that reshuffle then with Alex Mowat coming on ball is back to Angus Gunn down the other end of the field to us here away to our right as Borough attack from left to right and the ball's out for a throw in to Norwich on this near side Marcus Fulce not too happy about that decision but referee tells them to get on with it and get on with it they will I tell you what, I've been really impressed with the two centre backs for Middlesbrough, Adam McNair and Darrell Lenehan. They've been real mainstays for the Borough this season. And already they've blocked two or three potential goal bound shots between them. Yeah, the two quality operators and two players who like the ball to their feet as well. They're very good, aren't they, at this level? All cut out over on the far side by Ryan Giles. He'll bring it down now and we'll look to work it forward. And he finds the uh, feet of Cameron Archer. Ball then won back by Norwich. Bit of a wrestling match and that will be a free kick. Mullet concedes that to Sarah. And he's got five in his last 11 but hasn't yet had a sighter at goal. And we're looking to get further down the field if he can. As Norwich go in search of an equaliser. Another ball over the top. Stefan comes out quickly and did well. Oh, he's pulled it out there. He's uh, asked a little bit 
of his uh, teammate and they've lost possession there that was a poor ball to Tommy Smith and Andes now goes forward there was a challenge off the ball there by Smith and Andes has it on the towards the byline plays it in cleared away at the first time of Askin and then front clear by Middlesbrough out for a throw in but that was poor wasn't it from Zach Stefan there Tommy Smith had nowhere to go with that ball and he just played him straight into trouble well they're under a little bit of pressure this moment but uh, you know that was a real opportunity for uh, Stefan to sort of calm his team down let him get up the pitch let him get together maybe drop back in and pick it up and play out but he hurriedly threw the ball out to his team there there's a yellow shirt stood at the side of him yeah. these, are the, these are key things when you're managing the game you're managing the result you're in front you've got your nose in front don't need to do anything to give the opposition a leg up no, we'll be around the grounds of course uh, tomorrow with Adrian Durham on talks for just looking at some of the fixtures Millwall against Preston one of the games tomorrow in the uh, in the championship there's some amazing fixtures to come in the running really some really key games but that one tomorrow Millwall in fifth Preston in seventh goal difference separating them wow I bet this is what the championship's all about isn't it I yeah. think this is what makes it so fascinating and you go down to Sunderland and we spent a lot of time at Sunderland on tours to this season they've, another side have always been on the edge of it they're four points off it with five games left but they've got such a good goal difference that if they can get that four points back they would be in on goal difference so lots to play for here it's Middlesbrough who lead by a goal to nil you're live on TalkSport 2 your home of the EFL so many more live commentaries to come across April Ooh, the end of the season this is a poor challenge there from Sargent who goes crunching in there it's Johnny Housen that's took that one at the back of the head yeah he left a bit on him there didn't he yeah the led with his elbow yeah the referee will have a word the Housen in fairness accepts the apology from Josh Sargent and it is only a talking to to be fair to Johnny House and he lives by the sword, doesn't he? So, yeah. He'll have dished one or two of them out himself, no doubt. But it's still nice when a player gets up and just gets on with it. And yeah. he could have made a meal of that, he didn't. He just got up. They more ruined the fact that if he wasn't soaked to the skin already, he certainly <laughs> will be now. Almost landed in a puddle, didn't he? Yeah, skidded him across the turf. 1-0. Middles relieved. Not been too many chances for Burr other than the goal. But that's the difference at the moment. Borough took their chance. Norwich have passed up a few. What can Norwich do? They've got 10 to go to the break here. Ball out on this near side. Falls will roll it back. McNair turns around. Sees Zach Stefan, the Manchester City loanee, come forward. Stefan will bring the ball out. He's eventually going to be closed down by Sargent. And when he sees him coming, he just squares the ball off to Lenahan. He then moves it to Giles. And Giles feeds it to Mowat. And Mowat now will feed it over the halfway line. Back to Mowat. Turns on that left foot and gets it away. Nice play from Alex Mowat. Ball it's its way out now to Force. What can he do? He'll lay it back. Played a big part in the goal with that layoff to Chubarak Pomp. And now the ball fired into Akpom, back to goal. Mowat did well to make the most of that because that was a poor pass to him. And eventually Borough get it back and they have it over on the far side. Still leading by a goal to nil. And dominating this little passage of play now. They've got runners in behind here but they couldn't find one. They wanted a free kick. They thought that uh, Archer was blocked over on that far side. Referee didn't agree and forward now from Norwich. The tackles are sliding in. Here's Hackney now as the ball turned over for Borough. And Hackney's got Akpom in the middle. Instead he goes to the left-hand side here. Archer trying to weave his way past one or two. He'll square it back now. Ball work wide on the left. Cross comes in for force. Just couldn't get on the end of it. It might fall here to Housen. He lays it into the edge of the area. Archer went past one. Couldn't get past two. And the ball cleared away. Borough will get it back. Edge of the Norwich area. Smith will go back to halfway and they might have to go back to the keeper because Pookie did a really good job there to put pressure on McNair but they'll bypass that pressure and Moore has it back good spell for Middlesbrough yeah they're finding the feet now Middlesbrough it's a great passage of play I mean he's so dangerous Cameron Archer so busy and bright got down the sides of this Norwich City back four just couldn't fashion an angle to pull the trigger but they're looking more and more dangerous but we would worry for Norwich if Borough did get a second goal but it is still 1-0 and Bramall Lane will be there tomorrow on TalkSport 2. Another huge game at both ends of the table. Sheffield United against Cardiff City is live and exclusive on TalkSport 2 tomorrow. 
The Blades will be hoping that middles will slip up as Pookie does really well to get possession and keep possession. He's wide on the right, but his pass was just cut out. And Housen now's got time. And if he sends it forward, Falls had a run in behind. I don't think Housen could see it. And eventually the ball brought down and Mowat will go all the way back to his goalkeeper. And Zach Stefan has a touch and ooh, just for a second thought he was going to get caught there with the ball at his feet, but he eventually gets it away. And McNair slides forward, gets it away here for Chuba Akpom, gets it infield. Burr have got numbers on the left. Housen will slide it to Mowat. Mowat's got a couple outside him, but he got too greedy there. He tried to push Giles further down the field and the ball for Aarons but his clearance bounces back off Giles hits Aarons and goes out for a throw he thinks he's got the throw he hasn't it's a Borough throw in and Moat there just a little bit too greedy Neil yeah he was I mean that, what he did when he played the ball in between two players it was vague the pass needed to go to one of them and it didn't it actually fell between the both three give the defender a chance to go and get it but ironically since Ramsey's gone off they actually look a little bit more um, combative as a midfield now Middlesbrough because you know you've got Mowat in there who can stick his foot in Hatton has gone out to the left hand side obviously natural midfield player anyway but all these little jewels where the ball's sticking in the water a little bit Burr are coming out with them and they're really important yeah whereas they've lost the threat of Ramsey on the left he's seen Giles get forward a bit more now yeah. from fullback and he's given them a, a, a little bit of poke as well when it in regards to getting into the tackle and, and, and making sure that Borough come out with the ball well Borough have got a free kick midway inside the Norwich half it's right on the Borough left hand side the free kick going to be taken Norwich holding a high line edge of the area ball's going to be swinging there's plenty of Borough shirts arriving the flex come up the goal won't count Daryl Lenahan thought he was in for his first Borough goal the header was a beauty but the flag had gone up and it remains 1-0 but there were three red shirts went in behind and Borough have got it back on halfway again here's McNair McNair will go back just get the feeling at the moment Borough are in the zone where they look like they might pick up a second goal yeah it's a fantastic ball in to be fair I mean he doesn't need to go too early Archer and in the end the referee or the linesman does his job it is offside yeah we've not seen a replay but there were three of them who looked pretty close to being offside as Schubert Akpom does well again near side oh Housen was slow and he got clattered and he's lost his possession he sent one back by Hackney and Hackney has won a free kick because the Norwich player fell on the ball and the referees deemed that he handled it and Borough get it quickly back in the way and forward they go again here down the far side Borough leading by a goal to nil Archer on the half turn trying to find Akpom ball didn't find him but Borough pick it up again here now is Smith wide on the right he leaves it wide to Force Force goes past his man puts a cross in falls on the volley and he's got in Borough have their second goal what a sweet strike it was it's Hayden Hackney who side footed it past the keeper who was unsighted we said Borough were in the mood they are in the mood it's Middlesbrough 2 Norwich nil. yeah I'm just looking at the uh, Norwich bounce they're going absolutely crazy David Wagner obviously Norwich had a player down as that third phase of play continued the referee surrounded by yellow shirts but the bottom line is they've got to play on Norwich they've got to play to the whistle and it's a fantastic cross into the box and what a superb strike on the half volley by Aidan Hackney unerringly found the corner of the net it's no more than Middlesbrough deserve they've been the better side since they scored the first goal Norwich have just lost away a little bit well David Wagner is apoplectic with rage down on the sideline it was uh, Hernandez who went down over on the near side as we look and Norwich players were asking for the play to it, the ball to be put out of play but it's not a head injury so there's no they don't have to put it out of play Neil and Norwich I think has switched off there yeah. and Hackney's just wandered into the box hasn't he He's, he has just side foot in I don't think the keeper saw it until late it didn't have a, much power on it but it went in the back of the net and it's 2-0 yeah I mean there's just something there's something missing about this Norwich side because I mean I look at the start that they made they were absolutely fantastic flew out of the box lots of good movement sharp creative got around Middlesbrough and you're thinking you know they're going to be in for a tough night here Middlesbrough but as they've worn Norwich down they've found angles they've found shots at goal they've been diligent at the other end blocking and defending Paddy McNair and Lenehan and to be fair 2-0 sits about right it is about right 
Three to go to the break, live on TalkSport 2. A defeat for Norwich won't rule them out, of course it won't. There are still four games remaining. But at the moment, they're playing some nice stuff. It's easy on the eye, but they've got nothing up top at the moment. They've given the ball away again, and they get a little bit fortunate there that Smith's pass to Falls was heavy. But Falls again involved, wasn't he, down that right-hand side? He's said he's been in amongst the goal. Well, he's got a couple of big parts to play tonight in the goals. They're going to wear a free kick. Falls it was who just guilty of pulling on Sorensen Sherman quickly taken free kick by Norwich has given it straight to Housen Housen gets it here's Moat can hit on his left foot slides it through huge chance for 3-0 and Archer scores and Middlesbrough are on fire at the Riverside it's Middlesbrough 3 Norwich 0 what a spot by Alex Moat to pick his teammate out completely free in the box Cameron Archer and he has a good first touch, opens up his body, and with doing so it opens up all the goal, the goalkeeper's stranded really, Angus Gunn, and he puts the ball and early into the far corner, fantastic strike, 3-0, 3-0 and you look at Norwich really, they could have been well in front before any Middlesbrough goal was scored. Well questions were being asked about for a one win in their last five, They've come here tonight and shown that they have not yet given up on the top two. And at the very least, they aim to end the regular season on a high. What a performance this has been. And Archer, with a finish, picked his spot and put it in the bottom corner. It's another quality finish. It's three middles with goals. The last two coming inside the last three minutes. And Norwich at the moment... They look punch drunk, don't they? They've got no answers to this. Yeah, it, it, it's almost like they need half time just to regroup a little bit. They've lost that dynamic start from the front two. Yeah, they might win it back though. They might get a chance here. Sergeant has picked the pocket of McNair on the left-hand side, cutting in, goes in alone and he's put it in. Straight through the legs of Zach Stefan and Norwich have an instant response. And it's Josh Sargent's 12th goal of the season. He got past uh, Paddy McNair, drove straight at goal, he's kicked it straight through Zach Stefan. But a three, Norwich won. Well, what a fantastic finish by Sargent. You know, I was just writing him off there earlier. I mean, it's an opportunist goal because it's a it's a poor, poor defending on the right hand side and he's robbed the defender's robbed and he comes in on his right foot arrows in sergeant and you've got to ask some questions of the goalkeeper as well that's gone right through him but Norwich won't won't, won't be bothered putting them back in the game 3-1 yeah it's the start of the uh, local cricket season tomorrow I think there'll be a few embarrassed fielders doing a bit of fielding like Zach Stefan just did there it's gone straight through his legs hasn't it yeah I mean he's got his position all wrong I mean his body shape I mean, he's narrowing his angles but he's leaving himself wide open with his stance well, we've got five added on minutes at the end of the first half here on TalkSport 2-3-1 the Riverside was bouncing a minute ago it's a little bit quieter now as Borough have their lead Doctor 2 now 3-1 but what a game three goals in four minutes there at either end of the field and Josh Sargent not been in amongst the goals recently has got one here tonight his first in eight games and maybe he's about to hit form at the right time the USA international all over on the far side but have a throw in well, the attacking intense being there Neil always mm. makes for a good game doesn't it yeah it does and you know like we said before them first ten minutes it was all Norwich they really looked poor like they were going to go and finish and just couldn't find the, the back of the net but since then they've really come alive Middlesbrough they have Paul played forward into the centre circle the puddles again splashing up but to be fair the players are making light work the hasn't been as much slipping in the uh, last 20 minutes or so been a few errors but that's nothing that's been anything to do with the weather as Aaron's goes slipping over the far sideline and eventually comes to a halt on the AstroTurf part of the uh, outer pitch and we've had 90 seconds or so of the minimum five added on 3-1 there was a member of the uh, backroom staff I don't know if it was David Wagner himself who got a yellow card in the aftermath of that he might have got a yellow card for, the, for his bench Some, yeah somebody got a yellow card yeah they were they were incensed weren't they the Norwich bench 
Uh, so, Hernandez in fairness has got on and carried on so I think that justifies the decision of the referee and the decision of Middlesbrough they didn't have to kick the ball out and they didn't no you're right you're spot on and to be fair from Norwich's point of view they've got to keep going they've got to track the runners and they've got to pick up but I tell you what I've been really impressed by young Aidan Atley you know even when he's played centre midfield and then when he's gone on the left hand side I think he's looked really bright still gives him that aggression and that energy popped up with a goal fantastic performance so far 3-1 it is here at the Riverside and uh, I think you're right to mention Hayden Hackney a player that was uh, alone at Scunthorpe last year as they lost their football league status and it just shows isn't it going out and playing football in the senior leagues is invaluable isn't it to players like him and he's certainly doesn't look out of place now as Lennon's got to be careful gets it back to Stefan as Pookie was chasing him down all one in the centre circle by Norwich the ball cleared forward and flicked away Hackpom forces the error and it's hacked out of play by Norwich just going back to that point about Hayden Hackney he's got to go out and learn his trade hasn't he and playing football even in League 2 is invaluable yeah absolutely and, and it's the physicality you know if, if you look at him here I mean he's, he's not the biggest you know he's, he's quite small in his stature but physically you know he's a giant and he gets about people he closes down he gets, gets his body in really competitive yeah, he is and a goal to add to his uh, efforts tonight as well and a well taken one nice side foot finish from about 15 yards out didn't panic picked his spot and struck the ball in pass gun 3-1 Middlesbrough lead and they come forward again sergeant for Norwich or oh, just has too much over on the far side and an unfortunate pass and it ends up going out for a throw in you think that Norwich should be a little bit more buoyed by the goal that they've just pulled back but it looked to me a little bit like they feel a little bit sorry for themselves you know they have players down injured when goals have gone in but you know they're not waiting for anybody this Borough side they're not but it, it just keeps them in touch doesn't it one yeah. more error and all of a sudden it's a one goal game but I think Middlesbrough have come out and played some nice stuff yes they've had to weather a bit of a storm at times at the other end of the field but they've by and large done that and crucially they've picked up three goals and shrugged off the loss of Aaron Ramsey hopefully not too serious here can Borough again we're in added on time there's still time around about 30 seconds of the minimum five remaining Tommy Smith has it gets it wide to Falls Falls looking to play on the half turn he's just run off it there by McCallum and he'll take the ball quickly and it's back in play Falls has nicked it away it falls here to Akpom Akpom will not get the ball because the referee's come back for the uh, free kick and rightly so Falls was chopped down there 25 yards out and this is a real chance from the set piece here I wonder if this is uh, in Alex Mowat territory yeah I mean it's, it's so bright falls I mean he, his touch lets him down a little bit there McCallum he's having a look where he's going to play it before he's controlled it and the ball runs away from him and he's onto it like a shot falls well it's Giles so it's Giles and Housen have come over it's way to the right of goal but inside if you like the edge of the penalty area so about 10 yards to the right of the goal Giles the left foot option, House and the right footed option. Giles will float it in towards the penalty area. It's not cleared. It bounces here and it's drilled in. And Middlesbrough have got another goal. It's Cameron Archer. Buries it from eight yards out. The set piece not cleared by Norwich. And Norwich are down and out here. Surely Borough bouncing back with a big three points. Middlesbrough four, Norwich one. Well, that's really poor defending from Norwich, I have to say. You know, it's, it's a ball that's floated in. Um, by Ryan Giles it's not the best it's not really got the elevation Norwich defender slips and the ball ricochets about in the box it's not clear there's no urgency to clear it or clear or block and it's struck into the back of the net sweetly in the end by Cameron Archer but he can't believe his luck no he can't it, I think it was uh, Gabriel Sarah that he got the ball stuck under his feet and he just poked it straight to Archer had a touch and drilled it past gun for 4-1 and that coming in uh, deep in added on time and the referee surely now will blow the half time whistle well, what a first half it has been listen to that roar of approval at the riverside 
They were a little bit edgy early on. Timu Puki and Sargent both had chances in the opening few minutes. With a deadlock broken after good work from Force and Chuba Akpom. That fed in Cameron Archer who squared the ball and Aaron Ramsey tucked in at the far post. He went off injured after that. It was 1-0 with five minutes to go to the break. And then floodlights slept through. Floodgates opened. Aidan Hackney side footed home after good work from Force down the right hand side. That made it 2-0. And three minutes later Cameron Archer had tucked in after good work from Alex Moore. At 3-0 it looked all over, but Sargent went straight up the other end and got one back with a minute to go to the break, firing straight through Zach Stefan, but then in deep in added on first half injury time Cameron Archer tucked in his second for his fourth. What a performance in the first half. Middles were surely going back to winning ways for Norwich. They've got a big second half to come. At the Riverside it's raining goals now. It's Middles with four, Norwich one. Cheers Dan, two teams out for the second half, what can Norwich do here to try and stem the flow of goals that went into their net at the end of the first half, four goals to one, Borough lead here, no changes that I can see at the break, so we'll give you the lineup. Spur had to make a change in that first half, Aaron Ramsey went off injured, Alex Moore came on for him, so it's Stefan the goalkeeper, a back four of Giles Lennon, McNair and Smith, Moore and House and Holding with Hackney Tuber Akpol Marcus Falls behind Cameron Archer is now on a hat-trick following those two first half goals for Norwich Angus Gunn in goal a back four of Aarons Omobama Daly Sorensen and McCallum Sarah Ann Gibbs holding with Marquinhos Sargent and Hernandez behind Timu Puki who starts up top David Wagner will be incensed by the quality of defending Neil no doubting about that but they can't do anything about it now what's gone has gone they can only improve and how do they try and get back into this game well they've got to try and get the next goal I know that sounds really obvious um, and he's, he's going to want an improvement I mean it's the physicality of his side for me that's been a disappointment you know and, and the desire to, to really put your body on the line they're in a good position Norwich you know they, if they're going to result tonight then it's, you know you don't know I mean they'd be in the playoff positions and they'll be looking good but They've got a real stranglehold on the game now, Burra. They have. Michael Carrick will have been looking for a response from his side. He couldn't have had a more emphatic one, really, could he? With all those goals at the end of the first half. and They're looking good to get three points. Where it will take them, we don't know. The twists and turns are yet to unveil in the final stages of a marathon season you'll hear the closing stages of it live and exclusive on TalkSport 2 as Sargent makes a mazy run forward gets the ball out wide on the Norwich City right hand side a little bit of a slip there shot from distance cannons off the defender it'll fall back here Marquinhos tries to slide it through it'll fall to McCallum he whips in a ball for Pookie and it was headed just away from him it's a great defensive header from Middlesbrough Pookie was loitering in that six yard box and McNair puts it behind for a corner I tell you what he's been absolutely outstanding Paddy McNair at the back for Middlesbrough I mean that is dropping right on Timu Pukki's right foot to volley home and he throws himself and this is the difference right you know we're talking about that desire to get on the end of things he's been magnificent for Middlesbrough corner though for Norwich every comeback has to start somewhere does the Norwich comeback start here corner cleared as far as Hernandez skips to the byline tries to put the cross in again it's blocked Burry getting everything in front of the ball cleared the way up to the halfway line Sorensen oh, gives it away he got a little bit fortunate there in the end it does go out just for a throw in but Norwich were the first chance of the second half but their first chance in the first half Neil yeah they did you know there's a little bit of a reaction you can see that they're a little bit further forward they're on the front foot they've created the first opening of the second half but and the good news is the rain's just stopped now to a monsoon yeah that's right can't wait to walk back to the car park Neil <laughs> <laughs> all over the top they're looking to get fours in behind but it's eased back to the goalkeeper Gunn, ooh, plays it out to Sorensen who was quickly closed down by Chuba Akpom it, it, it seems incredulous that Burrow scored four goals and Chuba Akpom, Akpom's not really had a sight of goal has he? No he's not, but he's been he's been in and around a lot of good things that have happened for Middlesbrough he's playing well the lad Yeah, Hackney does well, there could be a chance here for a fifth goal Archer into the edge of the six, Akpom squares it and there he is, right on cue Chuba Akpom 
side puts in his 27th league goal of the season. Middlesbrough are bouncing back to form here. They lead by five goals to one. Archer the provider. Kubarak Pom with a finish. But a five, Norwich one. Well, brilliant by Kubarak uh, at from time in his run. Good play by Cameron Archer. Really composed. Got a good first touch, looking to get a shot off himself, realised the angle was too tight, so he steadied himself, got his defender faced up, rolled it through his legs across the goal, and who's there? Tuba Akpong. Brilliant finish. Well, he couldn't miss, could he? They're the ones right, right place, on. right time. Yeah. And he's pumped, delighted with himself. As Neil said earlier on, he believes he's going to score every time he pulls on a shirt at the moment, and he is scoring. That's 14 in 14 he's got now. That is some run, isn't it? Whatever level of football you're playing, to hit 14 goals in 14 games is phenomenal. Yeah, you know, goals breed goals, and he's got the confidence of a goal scorer. You know, and it's only a goal scorer in form that thinks I'm going to get in that six yard box because that's the way the ball's going. It's exactly where it landed. And Archer, as you said, I thought it showed a great deal of maturity there. Yeah. You could have forgiven him, he's on a hat trick, he wants to fire the ball himself. Never thought about it, did he? No. I mean, he steadied himself, brilliant. Stood the defender up, then rolled it across. It's a great finish at the end of it. Well, David Wagner stands on the edge of his technical area. He must think he's involved in some kind of bad dream here because never would he have anticipated this performance and now Hackney's won a free kick 30 yards out from goal over on the left hand side it just seems at the moment that Middles were just first to everything where it's in their box or in the opponent's box and you mentioned that McNair header away Neil I think that just typifies yeah. four at the moment doesn't it yeah it does and they did that the first half you know and it led to Burris starting to get chances red shirts been thrown in the way and putting the bodies on the line Ball now works its way down this near side. Cross comes in, it's going to loop under the crossbar. And Angus Gunn collects it. I don't think he's had a great deal of opportunity with any of the goals, has he? His defence have just completely failed him in front of him. I just feel though now, I mean, I, I mentioned at the beginning of the show that, you know, whichever which way this, this game went result-wise, you know, it could magnify the, the fact that the side that's falling behind is on a bad run you know they look at the results before for both sides I mean if it had been better you know they're having a run where it's, there's only been one win now for Norwich only one win and it couldn't get any worse than being pumped 5-1 and 5-1 with 39 minutes left here's Pookie trying to get in behind McNair McNair again stretches out and put it behind for a corner but as he shrugs his shoulder, I think he half wanted Zach Stefan to come and get that, he didn't, and McNair puts it behind for a corner. I just wonder about those Norwich fans up high and that'll stand away right over on the far side of the ground. Was. I wonder how long they leave it before they decide to tackle the A1 and make their way home. What a miserable journey that's going to be as it stands. Norwich looking for another response. Can they add to Josh Sargent's goal? Referee's not happy with something in the six-yard box here. He's calling an attacker too. I think it's Sergeant. He's called out. In fact, no, it's not. It's uh, Liam Gibbs. He's had a word with there. Uh, edge of the six-yard box. More pushing and shoving ensues from that warning. As in comes the delivery, driven low to the near post. Laid back, plan move, and Housen did well to smuggle away the shot. It was uh, Sarah with a shot that's deflected behind. It was a nicely worked corner kick. That. Yeah, really inventive. Low fast ball towards the near post. Touch back by Pook and it's a good strike that's well blocked. Again, though it's a red shirt in the way and it's stopping Norwich's way to goal. In another corner from their left hand side. Swung in deep this time to the six yard box. It's headed back towards goal, but it's wider the target. More frustration. So again it was with the effort that was well wide in the end. Five, yes, five goals to one middles lead. And if you look either side of half time, in effect, in real time, they've scored four goals in nine minutes and conceded one in that time as well. Yeah, unbelievable. I mean, this is, I mean, you look at them, them poor souls that have travelled up from Norwich today. You know, they'll, they'll look back on this in years' time. And remember when we travelled to Mil uh, Middlesbrough, we were 5 1 down and there was a monsoon. You know, this is what being a supporter is all about. 
Yeah. Through thick and thin and all that as Sargent makes his way forward. And he's not giving in just yet. Ball will break edge of the area. Another tackle comes in. A well-timed Hackney challenge as well. As the middles were player down on halfway, the ball goes out. The referee will stop play here. Is it Force who's gone down? No, I don't think it's Moore, isn't it? Yeah. Moore has gone down. I think he got caught in that that melee of tackles. Yeah, he's probably not had quite a prominent role as he maybe would have hoped here. Oh yeah, it's his teammate, I think. I think Housen's forearm smashed him in the chops, hasn't he? Yeah. Well, all those uh, Norwich fans are contemplating the trip home, they can have a look forward to another bumper weekend of football across the Torsport Network. We kick off tomorrow, Torsport exclusive, Aston Villa against Newcastle. Only place you hear on national radio is right here on Talk Sport. Rusmin Chowdhury, Clive Tilsley and the former England striker Dean Ashton, our team for that one. Here on Talk Sport 2, we'll be live and exclusive at Bramall Lane. Dan Windle once again in the chair, Nigel Adley and the former striker, uh, Scotland striker, sorry, Chris Arellamo, our comrade team, Sheffield United chasing automatic Cardiff hoping to avoid the drop then from 2.30 on Tour Sport it's game day live with Adrian Durham all the goals as they go in some huge games and we've got one of them live and exclusive on Tour Sport 2 from the Premier League Tottenham Hotspur against Bournemouth Dan Windle with Joe Shannon and the former Arsenal winger Perry Groves we're sending Perry to, our, uh, to Tottenham again are we? Mm, interesting uh, after that more live football as well it's the uh, Women's FA Cup semi-final on Tour Sport 2 Manchester United Brighton 5.15 and then we've got the second one on Sunday lunchtime 2.15 it's Aston Villa against Chelsea live on TalkSport Sam Matterface presenting that one Joe Shannon and the former England women's striker Leanne Sanderson and the football doesn't end there we're at Ellen Road live and exclusive on TalkSport Monday night for Leeds against Liverpool in the Premier League Adrian Durham will be joined by Sam Matterface and the former Liverpool midfielder Danny Murphy for that one right here come the changes for Norwich wholesale changes as well three changes they're making here uh, going off, Sam McCallum is about to be replaced by uh, Dimitris Genulis. Sam Byron and Adam Eder are coming on. Marquinhos and Puki are the players that make way. So changes are plenty then. Adam Eder comes on. And Sam Byron again, another former Leeds player, player you'll know well, Neil. Yeah, I mean, they've had to make these changes, to be honest with you, Not it, we've got to do something, 5-1 down, surprised they didn't make them at half-time, to be honest with you, but they've given the benefit of the doubt, but they've conceded again, straight after half-time, so, I don't blame David Wagner for changing one bit. Oh, I think there might have been an error there, in the numbers that went up, Onel Hernandez is, uh, oh, in fact, they've made a fourth change as well, John Rose, come on, so four in total, we make that. We'll double check that, they'll happen quite quickly, but uh, changes are plenty. And uh, maybe just a sign that David Wagner's had enough of this Chelsea, uh, this uh, Norwich side here today. 5-1, who would have thought this when we came to the Riverside here this evening? Norwich in big trouble, but still will have four games left to force their way in and as Dan's quite rightly pointed out, they've got Queen's Park Rangers, Swansea, West Brom and Blackpool. They're not four of the toughest games you could get. They're still with a chance, but I think it's the magnitude of the defeat, Neil, isn't it, that's the big problem here? I think it's the manner. You know, I, ju I just look at them and I don't know. I mean, they, after each goal, the, 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 the chins have dropped lower and lower and lower. And you, you, you're wanting for a battling, fighting performance here. You want your team to show some character. You do. Archer just lost the ball. Middles are looking to add to their haul here. Goal difference. If they can chase down Sheffield United, they, they need quite a few results to go in their favour for that to happen. But they have got a better goal difference now than the Blades. But it's points that are the problem and games in hand that are the issue for Middlesbrough now maybe will just run out of time but what they want to do Neil they want to end the season on a high they won't want to go into the playoffs should they be in them stumbling along for form no it's a good point point because it's usually the form team that's going into the playoffs that that prosper and they've had such a fantastic season but it would be a massive shame if they didn't at least get to the final 
if it is the playoffs. We are live on TalkSport 2 tonight. Mark Wilson with a former Leeds and Rotherham boss Neil Redfern. Just a stat coming up. Dan mentioned it at half time. They've had five shots now on goal and all five of them have gone in. Amazing. Talk about clinical. <laughs> Don't waste them, lads. <laughs> Well, they haven't needed to, have they? Norwich are trying to play their way out from the back here, and they've given the ball away. Crunching tackle goes in. The ball didn't quite fall for Borough, and it'll be brought away down this near side. And here's Aarons now. Looks to square the ball in field. So he gets it now. Can he work it out wide on the left? He can. Wasn't the cleanest pass, just held up in the wet conditions here I mean, it is credit to the pitch that it hasn't really got any worse throughout the evening because the rain is incessant here in a horrible evening weather wise and Norwich now just got the ball and you get a feeling Middles were happy to let them have it and they're just going to try and hit them on the break as and when they get the ball well they've been that clinical that you know it's a it's a good philosophy to adopt isn't it really because if they do regain it and they do get a sight of goals a chance it's going to go in yeah, certainly is. As the ball works its way back now, is cleared away by Zach Stefan. Ball played forward here on the near side is Gibbs for Norwich. Gets it away. Aarons has it in the right back position. Look to try and play it forward for Adamida, who's got those luminous pink boots on. Ball over on the far side, Norwich enjoying a bit more possession here, but not at the moment doing a great deal with it. What can Sam Byron do? He's wide on the right, just lays it down the channel. He was hoping there to get Janoulis involved, but the ball is played out and it's out for a throw to Middlesbrough. And we've got half an hour remaining here and a cruising to victory. Five goals to one they lead. Ramsey in the seventh minute then Hackney and Archer made it 3-0 Sergeant pulled back just before the break but also before the break Cameron Archer got his second and then he set one up for Tuber Akpom to make it five goals to one here on TalkSport 2 and it has been a thrashing for the Canaries it always interests me now you know when you get a situation like this when a run side so far in front you know what sort of attitude that they adopt you know if you were Michael Carrick now you'd want your team to be ruthless you know don't feel sorry for this Norwich side you've got them on the floor you want to get after them and get even more goals you know and all the top sides all the best sides in the world that's what they do well they could yet meet again couldn't they in the playoffs yeah. that is not a, an impossibility far from it really of course so many teams in with a shout of the top six that may be the most eventful part who actually gets in let alone what happens in the playoffs, you'll hear the playoffs live on TalkSport and TalkSport 2 as Borough almost gave the ball away inside their own penalty area and they might yet pay for that as Ida now gets it out wide on this near side. Can Norwich get a consolation? Aarons tries to slide it through, you can see the idea, he thought somebody was going to make a run. Sergeant looks at him as if to say, me? He said, yes, you. He didn't make the run, the pass goes through to the keeper. Yeah, it's, a, it's a good idea to be fair it's not a bad ball by Byron plays it in the space just need the man to run into it here's Akpom now turns into Aarons who does well to dispossess him and Aarons now heads off the other way over the halfway line he in turn looks to have given himself too much to do and Giles just nicks it away from him and now Giles will bring it back forward for Borough will now slide it forward Akpom oh, lovely touch takes him away from his man on Mabamadeli gets away from him tries to feed in Archer but just put too much on it but the idea was right from Borough's leading scorer he was looking for the man who created a goal for him he was trying to repay the favour yeah it's good play again they're, they're, they're so clever in the movement middles where as soon as they regain possession they know the areas that they want to go and attack in and that comes off the training pitch we're really pleased with that Michael Carrick Ball with Byron, finds Aaron, finds Adamida, ball taken away from him, here's Aiden Hackney, this time gives it away but then goes to win it straight back and he was wrestled, well, he was wrestled off the ball but the referee's given a free kick against him, no complaints from the Bury youngster, and Norwich starting to enjoy more possession now, and the Middlesbrough fans happy to look on at the moment, they know that the game is won, and after a, a tough couple of weeks results wise, the Borough are bouncing back here at the Riverside. They won't give up hope until it's mathematically impossible and all thoughts will turn to the playoffs. But they're in the mix. 
and on this form they're a match for anybody in this division make no bones about that but here come Norwich they've not done yet they've not given up on this one just yet as however unlikely as it may seem all wide on the Norwich City left hand side so he gets the ball now can he cut back in he does he's weaved his way in but eventually a leg sticks out and takes the ball away from him and the ball now reaches the Norwich last line of defence Mollett wins it back as the ball is played forward and Hackney now will ease the ball out to Giles who will look forward ball played in now to Chuba Akpom Akpom turns he's got a little bit of space takes him away from Oma Bamadeli here's Mollett now pops the ball off and the Borough when they get it just happy to pass it around Neil they don't need to force anything they don't need to be fancy do they no I mean this, this passing sequence from Middlesbrough has come from a little bit of siege mentality when Norwich got around their box and that's been the difference for me you know because they have got in the attacking third a lot of times Norwich but they've come up against the red wall Nelson gets a lucky break he breaks now for Hackney he skips forward gets it away just showed too much of it over on the far side to the Norwich defence and we're almost got in a tangle but they've tidied things up now they'll come forward again here is Giles on this near side Ryan Giles gives it to Akpom back to Giles Giles just waits for someone to come and close him down before passing the ball to Daryl Lenehan Lenehan to McNair McNair gets it away and Borough just working the angles here House and Moore's giving it away and now Norwich will look to try and break forward Aarons has it gets it away despite this result tonight Norwich going into the weekend will only be one point off the top six and with no more playing Preston they won't be out of the picture just yet I think at the initial outset though Mark they've been looking for something totally different out of this game even a point yeah you know would have been a massive point from there's another Borough player down over on the uh, far side so the uh, referee will go across the physios just getting uh, ready to come on and the referee calls on the physio and we'll have a stoppage in play here you are listening to Middlesbrough against Norwich City in the AFL live on Talksport 2 with Carling, the UK's number one lager 18 plus. Please drink responsibly. We mentioned all the action coming up tomorrow on Game Day Live. We're on next week. We've got Champions League semi uh, quarter final second leg. Chelsea take on Real Madrid. Chelsea behind from that first leg. It's live on Talksport on Tuesday night. Adrian Durham with Jim Prow, former, Ch uh, former Chelsea midfielder Andy Townsend. And uh, on Wednesday night, Bayern Munich take on Manchester City, quarter-final, second leg. Surely Manchester City have got the job done in that first leg. Adrian's joined by Sam Matterface and the former Manchester City manager Stuart Pearce for that one. Also on Wednesday night, Middles will take on Hull on Torswell 2 exclusive ride. Neil Redfern is alongside me tonight. will be alongside Jim Proudfoot on Wednesday night. Looks like uh, Force Foss but struggling. Yeah, he's just holding the top of his thigh. See, that'd be another loss, to be honest with you. You don't want too many injuries to key players, and both Ramsey and Force are key players in wide areas for Borough. Well, they are. One on the left, one on the right, and they're both leaving the field. Michael Carrick uh, looks on. They are about to make the change. And it is... Just seeing Ramsey sat on the uh, on the bench. It is going to be Isaiah Jones who comes on. Well, we've seen a lot of Isaiah Jones. He's got pace to burn, hasn't he? On that flank, he comes on for fours. Who makes way? Yeah, well, they still have that attacking impetus. Obviously, he can play wing back and full back as well, Isaiah Jones. But it's just the fact that you don't want to lose too many of your of your main squad members. Better. well here come Norwich edge of the area they're going to go for the shot hits the inside of the post the keeper Stefan was beaten Zara with a shot from the edge of the area it was a bullet shot it skipped across the surface that could be a penalty it's play on says the referee ball drilled in and now it's put back into the area it's headed away by Middlesbrough I, I've just got a question Neil 
if that's not a penalty what well, is that no simulation from Norwich because he'd gone flying in the edge of the area I can't believe the referee didn't give that yeah all going up the other end we'll come back to that in a moment here's Cameron Archer this would be controversial if they scored here Borough the ball eventually going to be not long and downfield Sergeant heads it the Norwich player who was fouled is still down the referee Burr are going to knock it out I'd like to see a replay of this Neil Redfern that looked a clear foul yeah from, from where we're sat it, it looked like a penalty to be honest with you the only thing I would say is that you know he, he, he definitely looked looked to play for it um, and whether the referee thinks he's dived or but there's a clear swing at the ball that's nowhere near the ball from the defender the ball goes past him and catches the attacker and the attacker goes down in the box well the referee has booked someone for protesting here Max Aarons is the player who's gone down he's now asking why was that not a foul we're getting a replay we now oh so how is penalty. that not a foul penalty <laughs> all day Ryan Giles has just kicked him flush on the kneecap now what I will say about Max Aarons is the dive right. after is a shocker yeah if he is. just falls over it's a penalty isn't it if we've got VAR, we haven't got VAR in the championship a lot of people thankful that we haven't but I have to say I think Norwich have been somewhat hard done by there that's that's an unbelievable decision and to be honest with you I, I just I don't know you, you know it, it's difficult I know it's a tough job being a referee but you just can't get decisions like that wrong sorry it looked to me and I've been seeing the replay it looks like it's kicked him full on the knee now the Max Aarons is the best actor in the championship or Norwich have been robbed of a penalty there was someone booked I think it was Sorensen who was booked for dissent in the uh, aftermath of that decision but uh, well David Wagner wasn't happy before that I don't think he'll be too happy with that decision it might not cost them tonight but it's a race that could come down a goal difference and it could be crucial well if you look at the goal difference that from Borough's point of view I mean they've passed Sheffield United now goal difference wise so if they do manage to get level with the Blades this is the importance of goal difference yeah that's it we've got 20 minutes left that could still change tonight is the ball works its way wide on the Norwich left here now is Sergeant left hand side of the area lays it back there are two waiting in the middle Adam Eater is one of those Will the ball reach him now? A little give and go edge of the area, but it's uh, intercepted there. It's Jonathan Rowe trying to work his way into the box, but the ball from Jones is laid back. And it's thump clear. No nonsense from Middlesbrough. Headed back inside the Borough half by Norwich, but Borough bring it down. And here now is Alex Moore. But Moore just cushions the ball away, and forward come the Borough again. They'd love a sex goal, wouldn't they? Just for the fans tonight who've turned out on this filthy night in the northeast but the football has been absolutely quality 5-1 Ramsey Hackney a double for Archer and a customary Tuber Akpom goal for Middlesbrough Josh Sargent with a sole reply although he's missed a couple of great chances as well and what were well, both at nil-nil and they might just be regretting that Norwich now I mentioned that band of fans over on the far side I think they're all still here although the misery for them Neil I guess if they're on the, the club coach it won't go till the end anyway so they might as well stay and watch it <laughs> yeah I mean I, listen it's been it's a horrible night um, and it's been made even worse by the performance by Norwich to be honest with you um, because the business end of the season the last thing you want from your side is to lay down in a game that's so important and it's, and it's looking like that's what they've done yeah it is they've uh, capitulated defensively some of the defending for those goals around half time was uh, abysmal at best and at such a key point such a key game in the club's season they were right back in it a point tonight at least would have got them in the top six a win would have really ramped up the pressure on those around them but they have folded here 17 remaining on talks foot two Mark Wilson with the former Leeds boss Neil Redford Dan Windle is back in the studio he'll be back with you tomorrow as well as forward now come Borough and the pass to Akpom was just a yard off its target he would have been in again Akpom 
There's a ball sliding challenge from Housen. He was never going to turn that chance down. He slides the ball down the channel. Into the area goes Archer. Wide on the left. Lays it back for Giles. Three red shirts wait in the middle. Hackney's got a chance. Tries to work it in. Archer down to the byline. Tries to square it and it's cleared away by Norwich. And they will get the ball away. Sergeant does well to shield it and he'll earn himself a free kick midway inside his own half. But Borough then were looking for that sixth goal. Yeah, well that's brilliant build-up play. And Archer's right in the middle of it all. You know, there's been some real standout performances from Middlesbrough tonight, but you know, I think Archer's awareness and will to want to go into areas where it really hurts Norwich have been a standout for me. Five goals to one. Middles were the only goal of the second half and they might be about to get another chance here as Giles picks the ball up, he feeds it inside here now to Hackney Hackney gets it away to Mowat, Mowat just got the ball stuck under his boots there, just had to take a moment but didn't give it away, McNair will quickly get the ball out wide on the right hand side, Jones is trying to get past his man and he has got past his man, now he's got to pick out a red shirt in the middle, he puts the cross above, all of them, Akpon couldn't get on it it'll fall to Housen who volleys it acrobatically over the top the veteran couldn't quite keep his shot down against his former club but Borough are just starting to roll again here 26,000 plus inside the Riverside and it's fair to say the large majority have enjoyed the entertainment on fair tonight another chance goes begging for yeah. Borough great play by Isaiah Jones really tricky on the right hand side turned his man superbly well and just left the ball at the far post and it's just a bit too big for his strikers but defended to the edge of the box and Johnny Housen not renowned for his goal scoring leaning back fired that one over the bar still 5-1 game day live tomorrow from 12.30 a double header live exclusive national radio commentary from the Premier League and from the championship rest assured every game we bring you now has got serious implications at either end of the table and that will be the case throughout the remainder of this season we've got European football as well we'll have both the Europa League quarter-final and the Europa Conference League quarter-final second legs if all with Manchester United and West Ham United live on the Talksport Network on Thursday night so much live football download the app if you've not got it you'll not miss any of the sporting action got the IPL coming on Talksport 2 as well here come Norwich now Here's Byram into the edge of the area, looks to square the ball, wants it given back, doesn't get it back, the shot stings the palms of Zach Stefan. Aaron shot though was straight at him, it's a routine save for the Middlesbrough goalkeeper. Yeah, they do look a little bit tighter on this right hand side, Norwich, Byram coming on with Max Aaron's, Aaron's playing in front of Byram, it's a good strike but straight at the goalkeeper, you'd expect him to save that. Ball works its way to this near side. 14 remaining here on Talksport 2. I'd like to think we're going to get at least one more goal. It's been a tough couple of weeks, hasn't it, results wise for both these two teams. But Middlesbrough, despite that shaky start when Norwich came out, had two really good chances. They've also took the lead, been imperious, and it could be in again here. Jones racing through, he's got Archer in the middle, just too strong on the cross. Akpon played him in with a lovely flick. Jones racing down the right touchline, he tried to find Archer, but the ball too high, and Gunn came out and claimed it nicely. Yeah, I think as soon as he lifts that ball in the air, it gives the goalkeeper a chance to come and collect it. I think if that's zipped across the floor, gives the Burnham man a chance to dive in and slide it in the back of the net. Yeah. And Archer created the first goal for Ramsey, created a goal for Akpom. So two goals, two assists, not a bad night's work really, Neil. No, I think he's been excellent. You know, I mean, he's, he's somebody that's really catching the eye this season. A lot of clubs are interested in him. You can understand why. It's just his energy and his, his nuisance value at times when the opposition's got the ball. He doesn't give anything up. Jones has done really well, he's won it back and now Chuba Akpom comes forward there's a slip theatrically on the far side by a Norwich defender but Akpom there must have uh, thought he was out for a walk on a Sunday morning going for the paper, he got his pocket pinched here going the other way is Eda, good challenge again they have been good at the back tonight, McNair again, crunching tackle you wouldn't have thought from that his team were 5-1 up yeah brilliant from McNair, I mean McNair's been through a lot 
with Middlesbrough. He's seen a lot of different changes, he's seen a lot of managers come and go, he's seen good times and lots of good times. He's a vastly, vastly experienced centre back and he's they've looked like that, both him and Lennon and at the back. Yeah. I know it was an eye-catching signing, Daryl Lennon. So good at Blackburn. Yeah. So consistent. Always looked good on the ball. Fits in nicely. There's a ball now with Liam Gibbs, who's playing in the middle of a a back three, it looks at the moment. But Neil Wagner looking on. It's still been a tough old night. Can they bounce back? They've got Queen's Park Rangers who are fighting for their lives at the bottom of the championship next up for them. The ball played over the top. McNair again heads it away. House and tidies things up. Doesn't quite find Jones, but I think just the sheer presence of Jones is causing problems in that Norwich defence because they're scared of his pace, clearly. Yeah, and he's staying really high up the pitch as well. There's a, there's a great get out for him. Um, you know, I, I just look at the Norwich now. It, it, they have played a little bit better this half. They have connected passes better. You know, they, they've got that goal back, but I don't know. It's it's not going to be easy for them to to shake this loss off. I think you've probably been involved in many teams Neil that have been promoted. What what will the mindset have been like? Do you think for Middlesbrough? You know, after that defeat to Burnley, coming into this one, everyone's written them off now, haven't they? But what will the mindset have been inside the camp? Well, exactly this response, you can see the determination, you know, they're a side that's been on an unbelievably good run, uh, not only winning games, but playing good football as well, and, you know, they've been really looking forward to this Burnley game. Well, here's Akpom now, breaks away from one challenge, if he looks up, he's got support arriving, Jones is there, great run forward from House and leads the defender away from Jones, he's going to have a shot, he is, but it's over the top. Well, it was worth the effort, and the crowd applaud the effort as well. Isaiah Jones fires over from 20 yards out. Well, it's great feat to fashion the chance, but no real belief in the shot. It's always going up. There's been some real clinical finishing from Borough tonight, but um, I think the shot shot per goal ratio has just got lost one. Yeah, it's probably only about. 60% now which yeah. is really pretty poor isn't it <laughs> and they're about to make another change here Mark Bowler is uh, coming into the action another player that's maybe not seen as much football as he would have liked he's had injury problems but he will come back into the action here Bowler down below as he's ready to go for the final 10 minutes or so as Norwich try and get forward McNair again just heads the ball away and Norwich have got themselves a throwing down by the corner flag. We're also going to see uh, Dan Barlasa as well, a January recruit. Only six appearances for him, having joined from Rotherham. Norwich have won it back down by the corner flag. What can they do here? Can they get themselves a second goal? To breathe a bit of life into their performance. Here now is Sam Byram. Norwich also lining up their final change. We're about to see uh, Marcelino Nunez as they get to the byline but it's out off Giles for a corner now oh, they're going to make the changes and it's going to be wholesale changes from Michael Carrick because he's also got Matt Crooks ready to go as well maybe time to wrap up Cameron Archer in a bit of cotton wool yeah, it's a good save some legs in it and I yeah. think that's going to be key going into the final games corner for Norwich who trail by five goals to one the damage really done in a 10 minute spell either side of half time when they conceded four goals and there's a challenge gone in there and the Borough player it was uh, Archer went down initially looked like he was going to make a meal of it and hops back up to his feet and brings the ball away and here come the changes then we'll start off with uh, Middlesbrough and the first player to go off is Hayden Hackney he makes way so Hayden Hackney goes off lovely ovation for him got the goal the second goal an important second goal as well that baller comes on on 82 minutes also coming on Chubrat Pum goes off this is the ovation for him another goal for him 14 in 14 he applauds the crowd as Matt Crooks comes on on the final change Johnny Housen will make way Dan Barlassa will come on for a triple substitution Barlas 
Chancellor who started up the road at Newcastle comes on for him and also about to come on Nunez for Norwich and he will replace Josh Sargent who has got a goal tonight but you have to say had a couple of huge opportunities that he missed yeah I mean the, the, the changes for different reasons obviously I think saving legs for Middlesbrough job's done 5-1 really comfortable performance result I think for Norwich it's just maybe having a look at these lads off the bench and saying to the lads that have got the shirts at the start that they've got a fight to keep them yeah they have indeed ball played forward by Norwich McNair will ease it back it, it seems quite strange to think that in a 5-1 win that Paddy McNair would be up there as one of the players of the match but obviously the likes of Cameron Archer with his two goals and two assists will catch the eye and he might not be done yet because here's Crooks now just trying to step over almost forgot to take the ball with him ball wide on the Borough right hand side a winner throw in Archer will be desperate having not been taken off he'll be desperate to get that third goal won't he yeah he will but just going back to, to Paddy McNair to be honest with you, the, the main feature of, of this game for me and the result performance is that the defensive qualities that Bury showed when Norwich were on top and the score was, was low, was quite low. Um, you know, getting the bodies in the way. McNair was right in the middle of all that. Just after half time again, throwing his body in the way, trying to protect his goal. And in the end, it's led to a comfortable performance for Borough. Here's Crooks now, advancing forward, running at the Norwich back four. We'll just ease it out wide on the right, cross comes in, it's over Archer. It might arrive to Giles, who's encouraged to shoot, but he tries to stand it up here, Aaron full in the face there. Referee will might just want to check he's OK, I think he is OK, Aaron's. And it's out for a throw in on this near side. Giles will quickly whip the ball back into play, he gets it down the touchline, we'll get it back. Midway inside the Norwich City half. 5-1 Middlesbrough leads they scored inside seven minutes and then scored three goals in five minutes of game time if you like and then scored another one straight after the break it was a blitz of goals from Middlesbrough that sees them go back above Luton in the third place and while Sheffield United have got two games in hand you'll hear how they get on tomorrow lunchtime on TalkSport 2 12.30 against Cardiff the Blades will have taken note of this performance and know that Middlesbrough are not going anywhere just yet. And that the job is not yet done. Here is Aarons again. Gets the ball. Byron will advance over halfway. Byron has it down the Norwich City right-hand side. Looks to work it down the touchline for Jonathan Rowe. Rowe with a couple of step-overs. Will try and get the ball back towards... Sara gets it back on the overlap. Now he's looking to put a cross. He had the chance there. He didn't opt, opt him not to put the cross in. Back now with Aaron's on the right hand side of the penalty area. They're trying to overload this side. Byron just showed too much of it to Giles and it's gone behind for a corner. Yeah, he defended quite well on this uh, left hand side, Giles, Ryan Giles. He's had a couple of occasions where he's been overloaded by yellow shirts, but stuck to his task. Got a foot in there to give a corner away, but it's good defending it is indeed 5-1 Michael Carrick looks on three and a half minutes left of normal time you're live on TalkSport 2 more live golf to come from the PGA Tour tonight all going to be whipped in from the corner decent ball in headed away it'll fall edge of the air it's headed back into the mix I think it could be uh, onside here Liam Gibbs he plays the ball in now the break is well and truly on here ball played forward for Archer who's only got one defender in front of him support arriving will he use the support he's got Crooks outside him Archer goes for goal and he's palmed away by Gunn well Crooks had a look at him and I think understanding that his teammates on a hatching understand why the shot went in and he's put behind for a middles recorder yeah it's understandable to be fair by Archer poor old Matt Crooks must have run the length of the pitch there overlapping as well he's got long legs what's wrong with you he just got the old custard <laughs> <laughs> uh, he looks at him didn't he thought yeah, go on then two goals two assists I'll, I'll forgive you that one yeah, he's got fresh legs Matt Crooks as well he's waiting with some important borough goals this season you get the feeling he'll have an important part to play in the running as well again Norwich have four defenders surrounding Archer in the six yard box then a, a group on the edge of the penalty area the corner going to be whipped in is there a six borough goal incoming keeper had a bit of a flap at that gun he actually got enough of it to get it away and it's hoofed out over on the far side for a 
throw in the middles where it wasn't overly convincing from the Scotland goalkeeper. No, it wasn't. I mean, it was a, it was a, it was whipped in, but I mean, it didn't really move that much. It wasn't flat. I mean, it could. He had a good long look at it. Gun. I think he maybe could have got both hands on that and caught it. Yeah, maybe he'll think that. Here's Mullet now. It's it away. Closing stages, final 90 seconds of normal time. Norwich, I think, will be hoping there's not too much added on. They'll want to try and get back down the motorway tonight. Lick their wounds and get ready for Queen's Park Rangers. As the ball is given away by Zach Stefan. He'll be disappointed with that. It's gone out for a throw in. And Norwich now have it on halfway maybe Wagner looks on Michael Carrick looks on as well the ball out for a throw no real rush from Norwich to keep the ball in it's been hard to evaluate the second half because Middles were have very much been in containment mode haven't they but they've still got the only goal yeah I think the standout thing for me is the way they've defended I know it sounds ironic that with the five goals they've scored but you know to, to, to keep these chances that are to limit the, the opportunities for Norwich. Well, know. Stefan's not really had anything to do, has he, second half? Not really. I mean, they haven't maybe seen a save where he's, you know, he's been, somebody's been clearing goal and they've, they've had the shot or the chance to score. But, you know, there's always a red and white shirt there blocking or sliding in or getting in the way. You know, it's this Pam Paddy McNair that's been in right in the middle of that, along with his teammate, Daryl Lenehan. Do you think Norwich will still make the playoffs, Neil? I think there's a chance. You know, I mean, they've shown enough glimpses at times. I just think, I don't know, when they've not got it at times, I, th I think they're milky, to be honest with you. Yeah. They've uh, lacked that fight, haven't they? You certainly feel that Housen and Hackney and then Mullet as well, when he come on, they, they've enjoyed it in midfield. They've pretty much had the run of the game, haven't they? All three of them between them. Yeah, they have. They've dominated in there. I mean, the shape they've adopted I mean they're both similar si both same systems but I think Middlesbrough play their system far better you know the box in midfield it's difficult to play through and around that central area you know Housen before him um, Hackney as well and Mowat going in there brilliant well we're into two added on minutes here on TalkSport 2 it's going to be a very interesting game day live across the TalkSport network tomorrow but Middlesbrough have served notice they might have been down on their luck in recent weeks but they're not yet done and dusted when it comes to the automatic promotion race they're now within five of Sheffield United who do have two games in hand offside flag belatedly there goes up against Max Aaron so Borough who've got the better goal difference should Sheffield United slip tomorrow it is advantage to the Blades they will play Cardiff tomorrow but questions were asked about Middlesbrough's mentality after one win in five and those questions have been emphatically answered Cameron Archer I think has got the man of the match two goals two assists for him three shots on target pretty good night all round for the youngster who will have a pivotal part to play in Middlesbrough's ambitions of a Premier League return they play the ball forward last few seconds here Norwich came to the Riverside knowing that a point would lift them into the top six they've been blown away by Borough who are looking to end on a high Isaiah Jones has it in fact he's just gonna run the clock down the referee says that will do it questions were asked about Michael Carrick's middles were those questions have been asked emphatically five goals from Ramsey Hackney a double for Cameron Archer and a trademark Chubarak Pom goal his 27th league goal of the season meant that Josh Sargent's goal just before the break was of little consequence Norwich well they'll fight on with hopes of a playoff place and a possible Premier League return but if you had to pick one of these two who are going to be in the Premier League next season then it'd be those in red Michael Carrick's team have bounced back to form and bounce back in style can they continue and close down Sheffield United time will tell on that one but the Borough are back they beat Norwich by five goals to one <laughs>